Snow Country. It was instrumental in awarding Yasunari Kawabata, the Nobel Prize in Literature in 1968. And its influence on modern Japanese literature is profound, but it also introduced Japan's literature to the rest of the world. So, how does one explain the strange experience when it comes to reading this lyrical, deep yet simple delivery of Yasunari Kawabata's Snow Country? Mono no aware, a term that many people claim to be untranslatable. The closest definition people seem to agree upon is an awareness of the transience of things. Despite our constant yearnings for our elders to tell us that youth is wasted on the young, and the warnings how our youth doesn't last, we find love to be the great currency that we exchange against our earliest years of life. Defining an impermanence, who we are, against the eternal of our memories, is where Snow Country lives. If there's one thing that remains constant in life, it's that things change. No thing seems to ever stay the same. If I say the word apple, it will project an image well known to the viewer. Saying snow evokes certain images and perhaps even feelings sending a chill down one's back. But some feelings. There are some that, if you started with how you felt, could you think of the perfect word to describe it? Shimamura, the main protagonist of Snow Country, searches for his mono, his thing, through this novel. He's an ambiguous character. Sometimes spiritual, dancing on the edge of sensuality, he never defines himself in relation to Komako. He never defines his mono. Aware is much more difficult to translate. It's an expression dating back to the Heian period. It is best translated to compassion, pity, sorrow. It's a word that defines itself almost externally, it's a reaction to the thing. That's the problem with things and defining this expression. Given enough time, mountains form, rivers create valleys, and even people change who they are. There is a transience to life, to things. Defining when the mountain is no longer a mountain, or the river, when does it become a stream? We tend to still call them by the one name. That is to say, we know there's an essence of the thing, even though it changes. And throughout Snow Country, our main character, Shimomura, will meet Komako, a geisha, several times, and each time in a different season. So as the world around them changes and time marches on, their love, their thing, is never defined. They search for an understanding of their own humanity. In many cultures, we have a speaker centric model. That means whoever is speaking is responsible for making sure the message comes across. Well, that's not true in Japan. It's listener centric. The person hearing or listening is responsible for picking up on meanings. So, your meaning, your thing and takeaway from this book will be something that I can't express or give to you. It's the ultimate irony that this book's transience and its meaning for each reader is achieving. It's mono no aware. <laughs>